Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Messy Church. This week, it's Hyde's turn, and I have with me three very good friends. Now, first, as somebody you may not remember quite so well because you haven't seen him for a long while. So can I introduce Terry? Terry. Hello. Um, I expect lots of you have... Uh... Uh, have got dogs or puppies mm -hmm. and I brought my two along with me I've always I've only ever had sheep dogs and I've brought number nine and number ten so I've had ten sheep dogs we'll have the introduction to the dogs a little bit later okay so that's something you can really look forward to so next can I introduce Sheila <clears throat> Hello. And Sue. Hello, okay. lovely to see you all. <laughs> okay. Um, and this week, before we hear the wonderful story about the dogs, which we're going to have shortly, we're going to hear a story told by David Suchet. And it's about King David, but he wasn't always a king. Once upon a time, he was a shepherd boy. And you'll remember from our Christmas messy church that shepherds were pretty unimportant people and in fact uh, David's dad thought he was so unimportant that he didn't even bring him to the prophet to show him uh, this youngest son he left him in the fields but that's another story let's see what happens when David Suchet tells us the story of King David the good shepherd David was a shepherd but when God looked at him, he saw a king. Sure enough, when David grew up, that's just what he became. And David was a great king. He had a heart like God's heart, full of love. Now, that didn't mean he was perfect because well, he did some terrible things. He even murdered a man. Oh no, David made a big mess of his life, but God can take even the biggest mess and make it work in his plan. I need a new heart, Lord, David prayed, because mine is full of sin. Make me clean inside. God heard David's prayer. He forgave David, and he made David a promise. I will make you great, David. And one day, a king will be born into your family, and he will heal the whole world. Did you know that David was a songwriter too? In fact, his songs were so good, they might have been in the top 40 charts if they'd been invented then. David's songs are like prayers. They're called psalms, and this one is called the Song of the Shepherd. It's probably number one on the psalm charts. And it goes like this. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me, he guides me, he looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside, my heart is very quiet. As quiet as lying still in soft green grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid, because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He's getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me. Everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness. I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go to. God gave David that song to sing to his people so they could know that he loved them and would always look after them like a shepherd loves his sheep and one day 
God was going to do something that would inspire thousands upon thousands of new songs. God was going to show his people once and for all just how much he loved them. Another shepherd was coming, a greater shepherd. He would be called the Good Shepherd. And this shepherd was going to lead all of God's lambs back to the place where they had always belonged, close to God's heart. That was a lovely, lovely story of David, the king, who's, who told that lovely uh, psalm and foresaw the coming of Jesus, who was going to be the good shepherd. Today, shepherds use sheepdogs, and so we're going to talk to Terry. Hello, everyone. Can I introduce you to my two collies, my two sheepdogs? I'm going to come over here. And I've got one sitting here. Can you see her? This is Spot. And Spot is a black and white Border Collie. And she's called Border Collie because they were first bred on sheep farms on the borders of England and Scotland and also on the borders of England and Wales. And they're used all over the country. They're mainly black and white, but you can get brown and white ones, and you can get ones that are black, gray and white, and they're called blue merles, and they often have blue eyes, whereas the darker dogs have brown eyes. And they're used for working sheep because they're extremely hardworking and they just want to do things for you. And they're also very intelligent. And like lots of, lots of breeds of dogs, you have to train them very carefully. So that's Spot. Now, let me just show you my next little dog. You come over here, Nelly. I'm going to pick Nelly up. Spot is six years old, and Nelly is only six months old. But she's already very keen to work, and she can do all sorts of things. And Nelly is a different kind of sheepdog. She's called a New Zealand Hunterway. And New Zealand Hunterways were bred especially because they're very, very robust, very energetic, and they can round up sheep in the mountains all day long. And not just all day long, but all day long every day. And Nellie's already starting to learn lots of things to do. So if you're starting to train a sheepdog, it's, it's a bit like training lots of other dogs. You have to teach them basic things to do. So Nelly, first of all, has to learn to sit. And you do that by lifting the dog's chin up and pushing her bottom on the ground and they learn it very quickly and then she has to learn to lie down and you do that you can often use a little treat with the puppies whereas you would you don't usually do that um, with the older dogs and you can teach her to lie down and then she has to learn to stay and you put your hand out to make her stay. And when you're training the dogs to go and round up the sheep, the border collies do it by staring at the sheep and moving towards them. The hunterway sheep dogs do it by barking at them. And both 
are used because they're both very clever and they help the shepherd in lots of ways. Now, when Sue and I went down to collect Nelly from my cousins in Wales, my cousin came back, he took Nelly's dad and he went up in the Brecon Beacons in the mountains in Wales to collect the sheep and that one dog brought back into the farmyard when we were there 470 sheep in two hours. And that's the kind of dog that you would shepherds often use in the mountains. And one thing about rounding up the sheep is the, the sheepdog always wants to bring them towards the shepherd. So you have to make sure that if you want to go around to the right, the sheepdog will look to the right and come that way. And what they do is they get them into a group, into a flock, and they gradually bring them down to the farmyard. So that's the kind of thing that these two dogs do. And I've had 10 sheepdogs, nine border collies, and Nellie's the first of the hunterways. And they're very, very good natured. They're ever so loyal. And they do the work because they want to do it for the shepherd. Thank you so much. That was really lovely. Uh, I, I've always had border collies as well, and they're wonderful dogs. They're very obedient. Uh, and as you say, they just want to please. Um, I think we've got enough time, hopefully, to do the two activities, but we are running a bit short. Sue, can you take it over for your activity? This is a shepherd's crook. Can you see the shape of it at the top? The shepherd use it to catch the sheep he wanted to catch one of his sheep, check on it and make sure it was healthy. So he would use this crook, to catch the sheep by its back leg and pull it towards him. Now, when I was out walking in the forest recently, I thought I'll have a look and see if I can find something that looks a bit like a shepherd's crook. And I found this stick. And I thought it's got a nice curve on it, just like the shepherd's crook. And I thought I could pick that into a shepherd's crook and I could catch my dog with it. Perhaps when you're out in the forest, you could have a look and see if you could find a stick that you could turn into a shepherd's crook. But today, I also want you to do some detective work. I want you to find out where on your body you have a crook, that crook that rhymes with the word book, and you've got one somewhere on your body. Can you find out where it is? There's a saying that goes by hook or by crook, same crook again. I wonder what that saying means. Can you find out? And for some of the really clever ones of you, can you find out when that saying was first recorded, where it was recorded, and by whom? I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's no good asking Alexa, but Alexa doesn't know the answer. But if you look at Siri or listen to Siri, you might find some of these answers. And I think you'll be very surprised at just how old that saying is. So good luck in your investigations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sue. Uh, and if you find out the answers, do send them to the uh, website uh, and the email address I think you all have. Uh, if not, I'm sure that Laura will put it on for you at the end. So Sheila, shall we just see if we can pop you in in time? So. Yep. Um, Today, because we've been thinking about sheep and shepherds, I thought we could make a sheep mask. 
And here's what I made. And we're going to try and make something, something like this. We haven't got a, a lot of time, so um, you'll have to do the work yourself, but you can keep pausing your um, video and having, having a look at this one. You'll need um, a paper plate, and if you haven't got a paper plate, a circle of card about this size that will cover your face. Um, and some spare card to make some ears. You'll need also scissors to do, do the cutting. Um, a pencil for drawing and a black felt tip pen to do the detail. Then to some people like prefer to hold hold a, a mask so um, if you've got a lolly stick or a good thick bit of card that would do or I've done both on this one just to show you or a, a piece of elastic so you can put it round your head. Um, you'll need a glue stick or some PVA glue and um, sellotape if you're using um, the lolly stick to stick it on there. And um, also, of course, the cotton wool for the head. Now to start, you need to mark where um, on your plate where the eyes will go to fit you. Obviously, it's no good copying mine because yours might be closer together, being smaller. Um, you need to cut out the eyes and um, it's probably a good idea to have a grown-up to help you to do that because this card is quite thick. Um, I've also marked two, where you put two holes um, if you're going to use the elastic or a slit if you're going to use the lolly, lollipop stick. So here's one I started. Um, you can see, if I put it close, I've actually drawn in pencil the, the features of the face that you need to draw. Um, so the next thing to do would be to draw on the face with the black felt tip. Um, I'm not going to do all of that um, because it's going to take, take too long and I won't do it nicely because I'm, I'll be in a hurry, but I'm just going to start it off, done a little bit of it. Um, when you fill in the nose bit, um, you need to leave two little white slits for the nostrils. I'll show you this one again. Can you see, can you see where you need to leave the nostrils? Um, you need to cut out two ears. Um, you can see that one. I, I, I happen to have some black cards, so I use black. But for this one, I've got white card. I've stuck one on and I will just quickly stick on the, the other one now. Then you need to stick on the cotton wool. And for that, I, I'm using PVA glue because I think it's a bit quicker. And you just spread it, spread it all over the top of the head, a paper plate with um, PVA glue. And then the, the cotton wool, I've <clears throat> had a big roll of it and I've made lots of little, little tiny balls. And I'm going to stick those on fairly random. And I'm not going to do the ho whole head because um, it'll take too long, but I'll just do enough to give you, give you an idea. It's quite quite um, easy. You don't have to be too fussy about it, because if you if you look at sheep, that often their wool isn't exactly very tidy. So, but that gives you the idea. Then all that remains to do is to attach your lollipop lollipop stick, um, which if you're using it, which goes in like that. You put it through the slit and then sellotape it across at the back firmly. Or if you're using the elastic, I'll take the stick out for a moment. If you're using the elastic, just thread it through your holes.
goodness me, I'm all butter, butter fingers today. There we go. And tie it, tie it in a knot and then do the other side. I'm just, I'm just going to do one side. And I'll show, show you the, the, the completed one, completely completed one, again. Now, I had an idea. If you still have your lion mask that a few weeks ago you may have made when Irene told the story of Daniel in the lion's den, I think you could use that to have some fun. David told a story um, when he was about to go and um, um, fight Goliath, that he actually uh, had to protect the sheep with, um, from lions and bears. And I thought if you've got brothers and sisters or you can get your parents or some other grown up to help, you need someone to be David, someone to be the sheep, someone to be the lion, use the stick you found when you've been on a walk and invent a little play of David protecting his sheep from the lion. So that's a little project for you. I hope you enjoy making your sheep mask. Bye. Thank you very much, Sheila. That was great fun. And hopefully everybody will um, be able to make that mask. Thank you all so much for being with us today. And hopefully uh, you'll remember the wonderful story of David, the shepherd king, who wrote that lovely psalm. Uh, and we'll end up in a minute with a song, which is a version of that psalm. But first of all, we're going to say a prayer and then we'll have a go at doing the grace together. Now, Terry doesn't know about this, so he might make an even bigger muddle of it than we usually do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll end up with a prayer first. <clears throat> Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you felt that David was the right person to be king, although he was an unimportant member of the family. We know that each of us, however important or unimportant we seem to be, are important to you. And we thank you for that. Amen. Now, Terry, we're going to have a go at doing Messy Grace together. And that is quite tricky because I forget the first bit quite often. <laughs> so I think it starts with this. May the grace of our Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, the love, and the love of God and the fellowship, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, of Holy Spirit be with us, be all, with us all, all evermore. 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> well, well done. <laughs> Thank you.